Good morning, everybody. Uh, glad to see that so many of you could make it despite the, um, the weather problems. Um, my name is uh, Ben Slama. I, uh, I work for uh, Accenture. I, I'm the UK and Ireland lead for um, a business that we've recently launched, which we, which we call Industry X.0. It's um, all about how do we help our industrial clients uh, obtain the benefit of digital uh, digitization throughout uh, all aspects of, of their business. Prior to that, um, I was uh, our global lead for a number of years of our industrial Internet of Things business. So I've worked a lot with um, clients on a cross-industry basis to help them gain the benefits of IoT and, and digitization. And what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about sort of the experiences that, um, that we've been having um, with our clients over the last couple of years, what we're seeing in the market, uh, particularly in terms of the challenges, but also the opportunities really that digital brings to industrial companies and some of the difficulties that uh, are required to be overcome here to get the, to get the benefits, and then give you a couple of examples as well as we, as we go through that. Okay, um, we, we spend a lot of time um, talking to clients, as, as you'd imagine, I mean, either through sort of formal research uh, or through um, uh, sort of day-to-day -day interactions with them. And um, um, we get some very, very consistent messages from our industrial, uh, the executives from our industrial clients on a uh, cross-industry and on a global basis. And the sort of things that we're hearing from them um, I think are, are, very are very typical. Things like um, our innovation cycles are too long and it's too slow for us to bring new technology and new solutions out to the market. Um, you know, the cost of uh, our warranty costs are increasing even though our quality is also increasing at, at the same time. Um, you know, we're struggling with skills within our workforce and how we upskill our workforce to be able to be effective in, um, uh, in developing new products. And you know, why is it that uh, our, client, our, uh, our competitors seem to be faster at bringing out new solutions and new services to our, to, uh, uh, to our clients? So we hear this very consistently within industrial. And I think the, um, the environment in which industrial companies have to operate today means that uh, these sort of comments are, are not in the slightest bit surprising. Um, and that is really sort of fundamentally driven by a handful of things. First of all, of course, um, the speed of technological change is very significant. The speed of uh, market and new market entrance is accelerating all the time. And at the fundamentally, at the heart of this, the very makeup of what is a product, what is the product that industrial companies are building today, that is it's changing. So products are containing more and more software than they ever have before. They're connected, they're smart, they're able to um, uh, deliver data in vast amounts. Um, they're able to actually tell us um, how they're performing in real life, and that is creating both challenges but also incredible new opportunities to create new services and new revenue streams uh, for, um, uh, for companies and for better engagement uh, with their customers. And the workforce, of course, is, is very much at the heart of this, and um, I think we've got uh, workforces that are nervous about the impact and, uh, of automation that's going to that's uh, affect them and how that's going to affect them and their jobs. Um, we have young people entering um, uh, industrial companies and entering the market, and these people, of course, are digital natives. They have expectations as to the digital tools that they will be using uh, in their work environment and to match those with the quality of the digital tools that they experience in their everyday life. And then finally, we're operating in a world in, um, of, uh, of IoT, of um, huge uh, issues around cybersecurity, around, uh, around creating ecosystems, um, and the new economy that is being driven out here. So it's really not surprising that uh, industrial companies are struggling with how to make the best of digitization and, and how to address this. One of the things that we sort of believe strongly is that it's no longer possible to simply be a follower when it comes to technology and when it comes to digital technologies um, uh, uh, in particular. So if you look, and, and this is a, a somewhat uh, complex uh, and messy slide, so I apologize for that, but um, if you look at the sort of pace of technological advancement really over the last 50 years, particularly around some of these key digital technologies. And what we're looking at is that the technologies that have taken 30 or 40 years to really mature, and I'm even talking here about sort of web 1.0, one are now maturing in 10 years or in five years. Um, and so <coughs> um, if you really want to be able to start taking advantage of things like uh, artificial intelligence, it's no longer possible just to sit on the sideline and wait and wait for these uh, uh, technologies to really mature before exploiting them. It's important to sort of jump in 
and um, experiment and start to take advantage of them right away. And this is a big challenge for many of our industrial clients, given the sort of cy life cycles and the, the um, innovation cycles under which, uh, under which they operate. Now, um, we've sort of taken a long look at sort of the complete end-to-end uh, -end, uh, creation value chain of, uh, of uh, industrial companies. And we think there are fundamental improvements that digital technologies can bring at every single step of that life cycle. So from the way uh, innovation and R&D is run within these organizations to the way products are designed, to the way products are manufactured, uh, to, the way that, to the way they're brought out and launched and tested and brought out into the market and supported in the field and, and ultimately retired. Digital has a role to play at every single step of the way. And I think some of the speakers that you'll hear from today and indeed some of the exhibitors that are out here uh, in the hall uh, sort of bear witness to the fact that digital technology can impact every single part of that cycle. Uh, now, it's not surprising, I think, you know, when we talk to clients and that, um, that they share, and when we talk to executives within uh, client organizations, they share these thoughts and they understand, or at least they say they understand the importance um, of, of these activities. So um, we did some research uh, last year. We looked at, uh, we spoke to executives in a thousand industrial companies across the world. Um, and I think the, in some respects, the, the um, uh, the feedback we got was, was, not totally, uh, was not totally surprising. So huge numbers of them, the vast majority of them, of course, all believe that um, it's absolutely critical for them to bring digital technologies to bear within their organizations, that they want to optimize their businesses, that they want to drive new revenue streams and new client engagement um, through the use of, uh, of technology. And so I think everybody's saying the right thing. But in fact, when we took a deeper look and we tried to understand how they were doing that, what we actually found was that very few, in fact, only about 13% of the companies that we spoke to and the executives that we spoke to admitted that their companies were actually succeeding in doing both at the same time. In other words, in driving out optimization of their, um, of their activities and their manufacturing, their production activities, um, driving out savings as a result of that, whilst at the same time um, in reinvesting that money and being able to actually create new businesses and new services. And I think this is really the challenge that exists. We, we strongly believe that actually you can use the money that you generate in one or that you save in one to drive the other. And that if you're not doing both, um, you're going to be in big trouble as, um, as time goes on. So. Um, as a result of that, you know, we, I, and I know there's a lot of talk, and this, this, um, this uh, conference is called uh, Industry 4.0, even though we're all going to work now to rename it May Smarter and to back uh, Jürgen on this. Um, but uh, sort of our sense is that Industry 4.0 is often used to refer to really um, production and manufacturing and operation optimization. And we think that's only a piece of the puzzle, and that it's a piece of the puzzle that's important and needs to be focused on, but it's not exclusively where the value will be created for industrial companies. In fact, it's a, um, uh, it's a mistake just to focus attention on that. And that's why we think, um, we, you know, we decided to coin the, the phrase industry X. Oh, we think there is much more to this uh, industrial revolution going forward than simply the optimization of, um, of your production and, uh, and saving costs associated with that. So what is this Industry X.0 that we talk about? Well, we think of it as really sort of being um, a, uh, we, we sort of think of it as a sort of a below the line and an above the line concept. So if you think about it sort of below the line, it's really about how do you transform your core production processes? How do you transform everything from innovation, R&D, um, your manufacturing, your operations, um, your support activities. So that's, you know, that's sort of the umbrella of what most people think about as Industry 4.0. And that's underpinned by um, critical digital technologies. So whether it's uh, uh, IoT platforms, whether it's uh, digital twin uh, software and, uh, and applications, digital thread, um, robotics, additive manufacturing, of course, all of these underpin um, that, uh, that optimization. But above the line, we believe it's a, it's a question of bringing to bear a lot of the practices that have been exploited now, the digital practices that have been exploited in the B2C world and bringing that into the industrial community and into, into B2B. So it's how do you put together um, innovation in a different way? How do you create new customer experiences for your customers? How do you use the data that you're getting from the products that you're creating um, to build new services 
and different types of relationships with your customers. And that's where we believe there is significant added value in this industrial revolution. And without capturing that, we believe that industrial companies are going to miss out on a big part of the value that is, um, is there from digital. So, um, this is um, the plug here for, uh, for Jürgen um, and all the work. We're really, really proud to be part of, um, of this sector activity um, that has produced the Made Smarter report that's been working with really a, um, uh, a terrific uh, team of, um, of colleagues across UK manufacturing and UK industry. Um, and UK consulting uh, to work on the, on the um, uh, Made Smarter report. We think the opportunities that exist to apply digital technology um, to UK manufacturing are huge and the value to be created is enormous. And I think Jürgen touched on that. The report goes into um, a lot of detail around how that can be achieved, um, what are the digital technologies that have the greatest potential for impact and so forth. Um, and we did quite a lot of work as part of the, as part of the uh, group to take a look at some key industries um, and to take a look at the value cases and the value realization that could be obtained uh, in these industries through the use of digital technologies. Um, the team came up with, um, as you can see from the numbers there, um, more than $250 billion of value that could be created just in seven key uh, industries when that was extrapolated to include others such as automotive and across the rest of the UK industrial sector, the number was over 400 billion dollars, uh, 400 billion pounds worth of value. And I think the key thing is when we looked at this, um, and as you can see, or hopefully you can see from this chart, um, some of that came from optimization of process, but some of that and, and an important part of that comes from the creation of new revenue streams um, and new services that uh, digitization can help uh, bring to the market. So, uh, as I say, very proud to be part of it and, and we think the opportunity is significant and we're very much behind um, the, uh, the, the, the whole initiative that has been driven here by Made Smarter. So, um, our clients often ask us, so, so where do we start with this? This is a pretty sort of uh, scary prospect. Um, how do we do it, particularly when we look at, <coughs> at uh, uh, at our manufacturing operations, where would be the correct uh, place to, to begin? Um, and I, uh, again, let me apologize, slightly detailed uh, chart here, and um, it's more sort of to give you a sense directionally, but um, we believe a good place to start is to, is to really do a, um, an assessment from a sort of a digital maturity pers perspective of, um, of the journey that um, you need to undertake uh, and, um, uh, and to create from that a roadmap. So uh, we do a lot of work with our clients in terms of uh, benchmarking the industry, looking at their, um, their maturity themselves from a digital perspective, looking at uh, best of class in and outside of, uh, of the industry um, and across the competition and truly really trying to understand where you should be across some key things. So uh, uh, things like security, things like the workforce, um, OT, IT, um, uh, integration and so on. And so I, I think there are a number and, and I think a number of companies are able to help in this area and really sort of help map out the path that, uh, that uh, is required for, for doing this. Um, I wanted to sort of really close off with just a couple of examples of organizations that we think have really um, taken up the challenge here and really taken up the challenge sort of from an end-to-end -end perspective and are not trying to simply address the problem from a, piece, uh, in a piecemeal and sort of point solution. Uh, one of these is Schneider Electric, a, um, a large client of ours. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. They're a, um, one of the world's largest uh, industrial equipment manufacturers, specializing in power equipment uh, in, in particular. Um, and one of the challenges they had, which I think uh, we see in a lot of, uh, of our industrial clients, they're highly divisionalized. They have lots of different businesses. A lot of it has grown through acquisition. They're trying to sort of bring all of that together. And so figuring out how to apply digital across an organization like that and to get value and to put the right structures in place is extremely difficult. And um, uh, what they uh, decided to do is, uh, is to work with Accenture and we actually put together a, um, uh, what they called a digital services factory. In other words, we put together teams of people that were experienced in, um, in uh, uh, customer experience, that were data scientists, that we helped them build their IoT platform, we helped them develop the applications that they needed, we helped them make their products more connected and smarter. Um, and so we were involved in a sort of a whole end-to-end -end activity with them that allowed them to go out and 
rapidly innovate, and they reduced product development cycle times from years down to you know, under 12 months. Um, they were able to test those, those theories and test those new services and products out in the market. They were able to create a whole new set of services around their existing product lines and drive greater profitability and new services out of the products they had. Um, and basically, we were able to accelerate that for them on a cross-divisional and a cross-business basis with a view that um, over time, as they build the skills themselves, and, um, and that's really one of the big challenges, is, is bringing those skills into the organization. But as they build those skills, um, we sort of step out of the picture. So um, what we were able to do for them is really to sort of drive in a matter of a couple of years, put in place probably a structure that would have taken them maybe 10 years to achieve. And, and to bring them the benefit of digitization quickly. Uh, last example, just before I close, is, um, is a sort of somewhat different one here, but actually an interesting one because it shows that many, many um, of the companies that we work with, particularly in um, asset intensive industries um, like utilities or, um, or uh, energy, um, actually have and have had for many years um, the data that they required in order to actually get value out, more value out of their businesses, but they simply don't use it. And um, uh, the data exists, the, a lot of the equipment already is censored, um, and they actually have the ability to do this, but they're just not exploiting it. Uh, mining is a sort of a pretty classic example. If you go to a, um, to a modern mine today, it's a um, highly automated and highly technical environment. Um, there's typically Wi-Fi, um, there's, um, there's uh, telematics and sensors in all the diggers, in all the equipment. Um, there's a lot of information about the quality of the, the, the rock and that they're mining and all sorts of things like that that's available. But typically what happens is that all of these um, solutions, all of these systems are siloed. And we see this in many uh, of our clients. The data is there. They bought individual systems from individual suppliers. Um, so they have a lot of information, but it's all siloed. And in this particular case, um, we've worked with Rio to basically um, develop a, um, a system that enables their um, pit operators uh, to have real-time information about every single aspect of the way the mine is working and operating and allowing them to make decisions in real time to improve the, um, the productivity of the mine. Um, so, as I say, I think there are lots of examples out there. Uh, Deborah touched on a number within uh, GE and externally. Um, I think digitization is really there. Um, uh, it's an opportunity to be grasped, and um, uh, I'd sort of encourage everybody in this room that's uh, going down that journey to, uh, um, to grasp it and take the advantage. Thanks very much.